We look today at Mark 14, verses 27 through 42. Then Jesus said to the disciples, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to Jesus, Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not be. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter spoke more vehemently, If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said likewise. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then Jesus said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went a little further and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And Jesus said, Abba, which is the Hebrew word for father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then Jesus came and found the three disciples sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went and prayed and spoke the same words, and when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. Then he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. I want to talk with you today about some of the words that appeared in this account from the book of Mark. One of the words that we heard was sheep. Jesus said that it had been prophesied, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Sheep are easily spooked and are pretty defenseless. If wolves or thieves kill the shepherd, the sheep will be easy prey and would run in all directions in terror. Why would God that the shepherd of the sheep be struck? Well, there are a couple reasons for this. One is because we are the sheep and we are sinful, and we deserve to be struck. We deserve death and we deserve hell. But Jesus would be struck with what we deserve for our sin so that we could be saved from death and hell. The prophet Zechariah spoke of this in chapter 13 of his book. Speaking of the day Jesus would die, he said, On that day there shall be a fountain opened for the house of David and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse themselves from sin and uncleanness. But another reason that the sheep would be scattered is because of the sheep's foolishness. All the disciples fled from Jesus that night because they didn't understand what Jesus had been telling them that he must die and because they had more fear in them than they did trust in Jesus. Jesus could have easily gotten away too. He knew they were coming, but he didn't want to get away. He was prepared to go and be struck so that we the sheep could be saved. Another word I want to talk to you about is death. Mark records how Jesus' soul was sorrowful unto death. Ever been really hungry or had a toothache and said, this toothache is killing me. Or if, if I don't eat soon, I'm going to die. That's kind of an exaggeration. Most of you have probably not even gone one day without eating. And although your tooth might hurt a lot, it's not going to kill you. But Jesus wasn't exaggerating here. He was in such agony and fear of what was to come that he was sweating blood out of his skin. The dread and terror of what was coming was killing him. It, of course, didn't kill him. Jesus would not die there in the Garden of Gethsemane. He would die on the cross. But Satan was tempting Jesus. Satan was putting before Jesus all that he would suffer and thus tempting Jesus to flee from it. But as we already heard, Jesus didn't flee from it. He went out to meet it. And here in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays to God for strength to do God's will, to do what was pleasing to God. And God gave him the strength. And it was for love of us that he faced that dread and fear instead of running from it. 
Satan didn't get Jesus to sin, so Jesus could go and be our Savior. Another word I want to talk to you about is cup. You've all had cups before. Sometimes cups are filled with really wonderful things like apple cider or hot chocolate, lemonade, or soda. Sometimes, however, cups are filled with something nasty that you wouldn't want to ever drink. Jesus is using cup here as a metaphor. He says, take this cup from me. Imagine that you had a cup filled with something nasty in front of you, something gross and disgusting, but you had to drink it all. Jesus, as we just talked about, was filled with dread and fear about all that he was going to suffer. He was going to die in a terrible way and he was going to be punished for all our sins. He did fear that and he did dread that. And he asks, as we can ask God when something unpleasant is before us, if there's another way. But Jesus also prayed, Thy will be done. If it was God's will for him to go forward, to have to do all those terrible things, he would do it and he would do it gladly. And so we learn from Jesus how we should pray. We should always pray, Thy will be done. That we can find strength in prayer to God to do the things that he sets before us. Our passage of the day is from the Lord's Prayer, so you might already know it. It is from Matthew 6.10. It goes, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We are, of course, talking to God here. And so say it with me. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.